Welcome back, everybody. You know, one of my favorite things to eat growing up as a kid in Pennsylvania, Italian sausage sandwiches, hot sausage sandwiches. I loved them. Well, here I am in Colorado, you know, 35 years later, and I still love to eat them. I think I've probably done three or maybe four videos here on my channel on hot Italian sausage sandwiches over the years. Now we all know that some of the best sausages are made on the East Coast, but I found these a few years ago. Canino's, baby. These are made in Denver, and they are some of the best I ever had. That's olive oil, by the way. All right, so let's open these up. I get the mild, by the way. You can get hot and mild at the Sam's Club here. I go with mild just because the kids prefer the mild. If I was eating them by myself, I would go with the hot variety. So I'm gonna put these down in my oil, like so. And I season these the same way that I love to season my hot dogs, baby. I always put black pepper on those. You can put a number of things, but I love to do black pepper. And I, oh my, I got a breath, a breath of that black pepper and granulated garlic. I have some, uh, especially a Pomodoro sauce, like a marinara. Um, I traditionally do not put that, <laughs> traditionally, I don't put that on my um, sausage sandwiches, but some people do. So I'm going to show you that version as well. Now, one thing, one trick that I learned over the years, this is a really good sauce. I found out if I save my jars from my pepperoncini peppers, put a little bit of that in my marinara, my Pomodoro sauce, and then I can mix it up. And it just, for some reason, that just gives it the added kick that I love. A little trick, a little tidbit that I've been doing here over the years. When I was growing up in Pennsylvania, uh, the two main toppings that went on your hot Italian sausage, a green bell pepper and a yellow onion. So that's what we got going here today. Now, okay, we could do this the fancy way that CJ does, but here's all I do to clean out a, a, a green bell pepper. There is the core and you just pull it out. That's all there is to it. If you have to get a few extra seeds out, you can just do it like that. But real simple. And there's a bunch of people that have a bunch of different ways to uh, get their green bell peppers or the bell peppers cleaned. Now, I'm going to make these a little bit longer, probably something more like that. Maybe like fajita slice length. Okay. So here we go. Next up, we have a yellow onion here. Same thing. I'm just going to go nice slices. That These would be comparable, I guess, to a fajita slice. So I go with like a round circle. And then I'll pretty much just slice those down in the center. Grab a little more oil here. And we're just gonna go straight down with those green bell peppers. You know, I suppose you could use red or yellow or orange bell peppers, but green was traditional for us growing up. So when I think about one of these, that's exactly what I think about. A little bit of black pepper on top of those onions and peppers. And we got snow coming down. And a little bit of uh, kosher salt. Grab my tongs. Tongs is the name of the game when you're doing sausages. And that's what we want right there. So the neat thing about doing the sausages on the Blackstone Griddle, baby, is you're gonna get that gorgeous outside. And then once I get the outside of the sausages exactly the way that I want them, I can turn the heat down and we can just wait till the internal temperature comes up since this is a raw pork sausage right there. I might even go ahead and dust a little more black pepper as well as a little more granulated garlic on the other side. All right, come back over here to my cutting board here. I'm using the Blackstone Pro Series prep cart today. I'm going to clean up my cutting board and uh, grab our rolls. Now, you've seen me pedal these for years. I've been using these forever. Sam's Club white hoagie rolls. They come in three or four different sizes. They're amazing. In my opinion, the best mass-produced bakery roll that you can buy coast to coast in America. You know, you certainly could probably buy a way better roll, right? And I say way better, I shouldn't say that. These are phenomenal. But buy a roll that's made by a little mom and pop shop out in Philadelphia, New York, wherever, that uh, you would say is the best, but hey, I live in Colorado, so you can slice those open like that. Another thing I've done over the years is I'll go ahead and do like one of these wedge cuts here where you could actually go like this and cut a little V like this down into your roll. 
boom and then you have another option as well so whatever you want to do you know i would go the thick roll you definitely do not want to use a hot dog type of roll when you're making these kinds of sandwiches and then we'll take these over to the griddle top like so i'm just going to put these in the back i'll move them around a little bit we're going to get these warm we're not toasting them at all we just want them to get a little bit of heat they're kind of cold here we're sitting out here in the snow but get a little steam and get some heat there we'll come over here and check our peppers and our onions which yeah instantly we're getting gorgeous color on those see that beautiful if you smell this or for me at least <laughs> it would excite you this was a common thing where i grew up in pennsylvania summer carnivals and fairs and parades around where i lived in northwestern pennsylvania boy uh summertime and hot italian sausages baby were synonymous mm. And like I said, I wasn't really looking to toast these buns, but they were kind of cold. So there we go. Got a little color on them. You can see the little bit of the oil from the griddle came onto those things. So I'm going to pull these off, and we'll just set these over here on my cutting board until later. Peppers and onions really are looking beautiful. And this brings back so many memories for me. We turned the camera off, but it's been another three or four minutes. See what I mean? Nothing's burned. Everything looks just perfect. Just moving the sausages around. So another neat thing about cooking on the griddle top is, uh, you know, everything's going to get beautiful. It's going to get caramelized layer on the outside, right? But the inside is not getting like tough. You're not going to bite into these and be like, oh, those things were overcooked. No, you can really take your time, move them around there and get the outsides just absolutely perfect. And I'll be honest with you here. I can't find my temperature probe right now. <laughs> <laughs> so I just had a slice into the sausage the old-fashioned way there to see if they were done and these definitely need a few more minutes You don't want to serve up a raw pork sausage peppers and onions are just about perfect I don't want them to burn so we're gonna bring these over here to our cutting board Like so hopefully you can see that steam coming off the onions and peppers. Hey, hey shout out to my longtime subscriber, Mike Sanders, baby. Uh, Mike and his wife, they live down in Louisiana and they grow their own Tabasco peppers and they make these cool sauces, man. He just hooked me up. Uh, you can find Mike, by the way. I'll put a link down below if you want to check out his videos. Uh, the garlic hot sauce, baby. That is my early favorite. I'll put a link down below in case you want to go watch any of Mike's videos, man. They cook it up. A lot of cool, uh, Mike, excuse me for this if I miscategorize you, but a lot of cool southern cooking, a lot of cool creole cooking. All right, here's my little uh, piece of sausage that I cut apart to sample right there. See, folks, that is what you want, man, that color, right? I'll tell you what, probably the main reason why I am not into German cooking because I absolutely can't stand boiled sausages. So let's give it a try. Hot. Mmm. That's perfect. I think we're about ready to start making up some of these sandwiches. Oh my, that's good. And I will tell you, most things cook so much quicker on a Blystone griddle. But sausages, if you're used to cooking on the old open grated grills whether it's charcoal or propane you're going to notice they take longer on the blackstone but that's actually a good thing because then you can take your time and move them around like we did here you know you can close the hood put some water in, the, in there and generate steam but see these things aren't getting burned or crisp they just look absolutely perfect i think these are all done there's the one we cut open earlier here let's grab some of these and bring them over to our cutting board grab one of our rolls here opening it up there's one of our sausages. Now, I will confess, I grew up in northwestern Pennsylvania. We put ketchup and mustard on everything. So don't judge me. My, <laughs> my go-to is always to just go ketchup and mustard on these. But boy, I tell you what, uh, later on in life, you know, I'm starting to eat them a little more plain like this. And the other way that I referenced earlier was to put the sausage in there like so, grab some of those peppers and onions, tuck them down there on the side. Then you come over here to your uh, marinara, or in my case, my pomodoro sauce. Is that good lighting, Hannah? Yeah. Yeah, drip it on there like so, okay. Put a little mozzarella on there like so. And then we put them down here on the griddle top. Then we go down with a little bit of water again. Close the hood and melt that cheese. Oh yeah. All right, let's check out that cheese. I think we're getting there right now, baby. That's looking good. And here come 
the version with the Pomodoro sauce. Oh my goodness. I, I always say this, but I certainly hope these look half as good on camera as they do here in person. Oh my goodness. I'm going to say it again. Take a look at that. Let's grab one of the new ones with sauce right there, baby. Okay, that's again, that's the non-traditional way, or at least the way that wasn't traditional for us growing up. Let's give it a try. That's really good with the sauce in there. And by the way, that little trick that I showed you, throw a little pepperoncini sauce. Now listen, that isn't to say that you're supposed to go out um, and grab like Prego. Ugh, ragu. No. Like if you have a good sauce, right? But you want to like give it, like like Desiree would say, you want to zhuzh it up, make it a little better. Oh baby, put a little bit of the Mazetta pepperoncini sauce in there. That is so good. And of course, the traditional ones right there. I don't need to bite into that right now, man. You can go back in my archives and see me eating a whole bunch of these. But let's take one more look at these sandwiches here, folks. And I got a bunch more to make here, by the way. Look at this. We're going to make these up. Going to feed the family and feed the neighbors. So until next time, everybody, this is Todd. Praise the Lord and pass the Italian sausage sandwiches.